Welcome to What Makes This Bike Great. And today is all about the magnificent, mellifluous, magical masterpiece that is Suzuki's GSX-R 750. Now that's quite an introduction, but this is quite a bike. And this is a bike, a sports bike, that will never be made again. This is the end of an era of sports bikes. So if you think about it, sports bikes now are starting to diverge in two directions. On the one side, you've got the hyper expensive, hyper fast, hyper powerful super bikes. And then on the other side of the coin, you've got the kind of more affordable, soft, less powerful, more approachable middleweight sports bikes. And there's nothing in the middle. And there hasn't been anything in the middle really for a long, long time since the GSX-R 750 ruled the roost. So, okay, you could say that maybe the Triumph 765 triple, uh, street triple, could kind of fill that gap, and it almost does. And you could say that the Ducati Panigale V2, or the 959 as it was, and the 899, is kind of a V-twin version of this bike. But there is nothing quite like a screaming inline four 750cc engine. Now for sports bike fans that have ridden the GSX-R 750, they'll kind of nod sagely, rub their chin, and tell you that the GSX-R 750 is the best balance of power and handling of any bike, and that in the real world, it will keep up with a thousand. And all those things are true. But the thing that makes this bike so exciting is that underneath the 750 sticker, this is basically a GSX-R 600, but with a slightly bigger engine and slightly more torque, slightly more power, but not too much. So because this is a GSX-R 600, it's got all the good bits of a super sport bike. So this engine, it, it revs to the moon, it screams, it growls, it's exciting, it's involving. It's just one of the most exciting engines you can use. It's wrapped in a really small, lightweight chassis that has fantastic handling, it's really agile, easy to ride, easy to feel the grip, it's really light, the brakes are fantastic, no ABS to get in the way, no traction control to get in the way, and really, this bike is the scalpel, not one of those orange bikes. Even when a 1000cc superbike is faster than a GSX-R 750, it's never for long. Okay, a thousand's quicker around a big track, um, a thousand's quicker on an autobahn, but the thing with a thousand is they're so brutal, they're so hard to change direction, they're so fast, is that they just absolutely mash your brain, they mash your muscles, they destroy tires, they destroy brakes. Whereas this is just easy, it's easy on the body, it's easy on itself. So if you're doing a track day, you're gonna be queuing up for the last session, eager to get out, still refreshed, having fun on your 750, when the person on the thousands already packed their bike up in the van and they're on their way home via the drive through getting a cheeky Mackie D's. But also the GSX-R 750 is a fantastic road bike. Yes, it is a race replica and it is quite extreme, but not too extreme. So the bars aren't too low, although by today's standards, super bike standards, they're kind of quite pulled in. Modern, more modern bikes are more pushed out, more like motocross bars. Um, it's relatively roomy. The seat's quite squidgy, it's quite comfortable. It's got three-way adjustable foot pegs, um, so you can lower those so taller riders um, won't feel cramped. It's got decent wind protection. Sports bikes just slide through the wind so easily compared to adventure bikes and naked bikes. They're quite quiet at speed. Um, and because the engine's got that little bit more grunt, it's nice and flexible on the road. So unlike a 600, you're not keeping this engine on the boil all the time. You can quite happily leave it in top gear and go on your merry way. Now this particular bike here kind of sums up the golden era of the GSX-R 750. So I'm kind of talking the noughties. That's when the GSX-R 750s were at their best. That's when they're at their lightest, most kind of angry, fastest and just most rewarding of all the GSX-Rs. Um, and that kind of started in the year 2000 with the Y model, and the Y model turned into the K1, K2, and K3. Uh, then Suzuki brought out a K4 and K5, and then the next model was K6 and 7. Then it was the K8, which this is, and that went up to K9 
And at the time they were calling them K10s, but now retrospectively they're calling them LOs. And this is a 2010 model. And then the final flourish of the GSX-R 750 was the L1 in 2011. And after that, Suzuki never developed the GSX-R 750. This particular bike here is stunning, isn't it? This is a 25th anniversary GSX-R 750 built in 2010. This is a UK only uh, anniversary model and is painted in SRAD colors. And in the flesh, these red bits are Lumo and they look absolutely amazing. So 25 years back from this was the uh, 96 SRAD. Um, and it just looks fantastic. It's got a fantastic um, Suzuki pipe. Only 25 of these were built and the owners got themselves a little uh, certificate to show they had a special bike. Um, but apart from that, it's basically still a GSX-R 750, nice standard one. These were the days where Suzuki updated their bikes every couple of years. And um, that's how important sports bikes were there. We used to go on launches and sit through really long detailed presentations of, of GSX-R 750s and how the engineers had really kind of gone to town and, and improved it from the previous model. So um, let me tell you what this particular bike has got. I mean, I'd love to spend all day here telling you about every single GSX-R 750, but let's just pick on this one for now. And uh, who knows, in the future, maybe we'll uh, do some other models. So for the K8, this bike had a stiffer crankcase, had new pistons, cylinder head and cams, which had the same lift, but less duration for more flexible power. Um, steeper injector angles in the throttle bodies uh, with eight nozzles instead of four. I mean, this is geeky detail. Uh, secondary injectors had fewer holes, went down from 12 to 8. The aluminium frame uh, was the same. Um, the swing arm had more flex. Imagine that. 5mm um, shorter wheelbase. The three-spoke wheels on this were lighter. Uh, the forks had high and low speed, speed compression damping for the first time. All this bodywork was new. The fuel tank was up half a litre to 17 and a half litres. Oh no, to 17. Uh, the Tokiko or Tokiko brake calipers up the front were from a Hayabusa and had thinner discs with 12 floating pins instead of eight. New clocks, uh, for the first time it kind of had some electronics on, it had Suzuki drive mode selector and um, that was first seen on the GSX R1000 K7 and you had A, B and C modes but to be honest with a bike like this you don't need to dumb down the power, you just stick it in a um, but no other electronics, no traction control, no wheelie control, no quick shifter. Um, it had a Suzuki um, electronic steering damper for the first time. First time on a GSX-R 750 anyway. The exhaust was four kilos heavier than before, the standard exhaust. So these were the days where the Euro rules were starting to creep in, which ultimately killed the GSX-R. Well, the rules themselves didn't kill the GSX-R, the fact that the sales slid killed the GSX-R. Um, it came on Bridgestone BT-016 tires, um, it's now got Super Courses on, fantastic tires. Um, in 2008, this bike was £8,200, but this limited edition bike was uh, 10, 10 and a bit grand. Um, and then power and weight, so claimed power was 150 bhp, claimed dry weight was 167. Um, we had this on uh, the dyno BSD and it makes a true 133 bhp at the rear wheel. So uh, not to be sniffed at. Um, and then just quickly telling you about the L1 for the final edition GSX-R. That was 2 bhp down on this one. So I'm guessing that was kind of Euro uh, driven. Suzuki claimed 8 kilos less, so the L1's a lot lighter, but they're a little bit cheeky because um, they then claim the weight is 190 kilos curb weight for the fuel. So there's no way of being able to check um, if that eight kilo difference was actually a real real weight saving. Uh, they said it was 10% more fuel efficient, which no GSX-R 750 owner would ever care about. Um, they had minor engine tweaks, uh, new chassis, new bodywork, new dash, new exhaust, new rear shock, new brakes. Um, and it had the, the same updates as the GSX-R 600 of the day, which that was a real leap forward, whereas the 750 wasn't such a leap forward. Um, 
So, you know, even by today's standards, the GSX-R750 is fantastic. I ride loads and loads of sports bikes for my day job and super bikes. And yes, they're impressive. Yes, they're fast, but nothing has got the purity of a GSX-R750, just nothing, honestly speaking. This is an incredible bike and, you know, we're so used to seeing it. Um, you kind of take it for granted, but when you ride one, honestly, it just absolutely blows you away. The only real clues to its age is the, is the dash. The dash looks quite old fashioned compared to today's full color TFTs. But that aside, you know, its lightness, its analog simplicity is just something you just do not get on any bike nowadays. And because there's no wheelie control, there's no ABS, there's no traction control, the GSX-R750 will let you have a lot of fun compared to a lot of modern day super bikes. The GSX-R750 has kind of been a friend to me throughout my whole biking career. When I was 16 in 1986, I remember seeing Schwantz and Rainey battle it out the transatlantic races at Brands Hatch on video and in magazine articles. Wow, what races those were. And I was a Schwantz fanboy from the off. You know, that crash helmet there, his, his iconic original crash helmet is just amazing. That led me to buy a GSX-R750 uh, slingshot, J slingshot in 1988. It was the first bike I raced, first bike I crashed and broke bones on. Um, and then throughout my MCN career, the GSX-R750 has kind of been with me all the way through. I raced a K6 and a K8, the European uh, GSX-R Cup, Magnicor and Masano, which was just unbelievable. Um, I did GSX-R750 launches, K6 at Phillip Island, K8 at Guadix and L1 in Monte Blanco, amazing. Um, and then I had uh, a couple of GSX-R750 long-termers, a K8 and an L1. And I did absolutely everything on those bikes, you know, touring, track days, Nürburgring. And it was just amazing. I just had such amazing memories of the GSX-R750. And it was always a giant killer, even in group tests. Even in group tests, it's beat Fireblades, you know. And I remember at uh, Nardo, we did a group test and the GSX-R750 did a true GPS recorded 182 mile an hour around a massive loop that they've got there. The GSX-R750 was the first race rep as we know it today, back in 85 when they produced the Slab Cider, and it's inextricably linked with bike heroes like Kevin Schwantz. The early slingshots and homologation special R models were designed to battle with the RC30 on track, which didn't quite work, but they were still cool all the same. Then after that, the early 90s GSX-R750s went a bit Elvis Presley. They gained a bit of weight and they wore garish track suits but Suzuki showed the world it was serious again with the 1996 SRAD, followed by the super light and powerful Nortis 750s. It's such a crying shame that Suzuki never developed the GSX-R750 after the L1, after 2011. They carried on selling it in a lot of countries. In the UK, it stopped in about 2016, 2017, but it carried on elsewhere, but it's slowly fizzling out which is a real shame, but you can see why Suzuki didn't develop it because, you know, around about the time of the L1, sports bike sales just took a real nosedive and it wasn't worth them producing it again. If they, if they were popular, they would still be developed and still be produced. So it's just a shame. It's just the way of the world, but these bikes still exist. They're still around. You can still find good examples of them. And if you are a sports bike fan, you owe it to yourself just once to ride a GSX-R750, just to feel the purity, just to feel that kind of iconic balance of power and handling that everyone talks about. And all of those things wrapped up is what makes this bike great. So before I sign off, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Ben Neves for lending me his pride and joy to do this video. He's also a massive GSX-R750 fan. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and look out for more videos like this coming very soon.